I'm going to ask you first, because I've been struggling a bit with it, mm. classify yourself. I looked on your website, yeah. and there's about... <laughs> If I put them all, then... <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> heavy metal I don't think was in there. No. That was about it. Well, the thing is, I find that one so hard, and I know there is, you know, the, the you know, I've you know, read it on, on, on blogs and magazines, and I've heard it on radios and podcasts, you know, help, it, you know, it really helps when someone can familiarise um, your music with by having a box because then actually it create it uncreates a barrier and it helps someone um, take a chance or get into your music. I'm kind of settling on alternative. <laughs> is that <laughs> that's is that your Asian going? You got alternative. <laughs> I know. Retract that. Retract. I'm very hard. I'm very Well, this is the conversation I was having with my bandmate, is that if I say jazz, then people will go, oh, no, you're not jazz. You're, um, you're more folk. And when I say folk, people will go, oh, no, you're not folk. You're like jazz. So then if I say blues, people are like, well, you're not blues. You're Americana. And then when I go, well, I'm Americana, you're not Americana. So it's like, whatever I say... You, you people... come back to the start again, don't you? Yeah. Well, I've done this bit. <laughs> So whatever I say, really, um, people are, will always have their their view and their mind. So that's been so hard in terms of the fact that I fuse all of those genres in a way. I think you've established... I know what you're saying. <laughs> I do, honestly. So I, yeah, I'm, I, I think if your identity in yourself is strong enough and your songs are strong enough mm. you can transcend that pigeonholing i mean i think ultimately you have to you have to sort of be known for an area where you are and i know at the uh, uh, when we we talked earlier in birmingham um i likened you to joan armor trading which i then subsequently thought ah that was a bit of an easy call for me to make because she's from my era Songwriter similar, but then I thought, well, how would I? Where would I pitch Joan Armour Trading? You did it pop. Was she folk? She was very folky at times, particularly early on in her career. You know, so it's it's difficult to put these tags on, mm. but it is also I, it's understandable why people kind of need to. Natalie. listening to my grandmother's rock and old, old rock and roll records and at the same time um, Spice Girls were emerging <laughs> in my face. They are again I believe. <laughs> <laughs> no, good. All four of them. <laughs> yeah just the two I guess the, it was just it was just I was just taken by the two uh, genres and that's really funny because they're quite contrasting you've got this sort of like pop stardom like takeover mixed with like r like rhythm and blues and and uh, um, and like sort of vinyl player and like sort of old school like music um, and um, and then I I guess I and I guess um, as, as every teenager uh, goes through I sort of said goodbye to the pop and the and the and the vinyls and stuff and um and I moved on to uh like indie and like uh and bands like uh, Nine Inch Nails and Muse and I was going through like a rock sort of like stage uh, of uh, adolescence I suppose and then I I stumbled across uh, and I was listening to Muse and then it, like the next thing that came up on the playlist was um, was uh, Nina Simone feeling good, like because Muse did a cover of Nina Simone, yes. 
Yes, and I was they like, did. You're right. and I was like, and honestly, my jaw just like just dropped, and I was like, oh my lord, I was just like, who is this? And why have I, why have I not ever heard this woman? And that was it. I was just set. Light bulb moment. <laughs> like, light bulb moment. I was like, I, and then I just basically, like, li- I've listened to Nina Simone, like, ever, ever since. Um, and listening to her opened me up to other, like, jazz artists. Um, so, like, Billie Holiday, Sarah Vaughan, um, Abby Lincoln. And it just it just kept on opening and opening the door to, like, jazz singers and jazz vocalists. I've never Lilac Wine then opened me to Leonard Cohen mm. and Loudon Wainwright where I could, you know, I could, I suppose, that, that that kind of influence started the sort of folk sort of storytelling sort of influence. And I suppose that um, that with the Nina Simone and the jazz influence, I suppose I could start then, you know, thinking back, I could start going, all oh, right, okay. I suppose I looked up to Nina Simone and thought, I don't have to be this, you know, like, phenomenal keyboard player uh, and jazz voice to maybe start to put some songs together. Pleases me when I'm pleasing you There's not a lot that I wouldn't Just to see you smile I'll lift you up When you're feeling down I'll be shelter I'll be your girl Do you write Just on the guitar, on the piano, with the band or solo and then take the stuff to the band? What's, what's the process of songwriting for you? Um, I write um, with my guitar um, when I... I haven't always played guitar, so I used to just write um, lyrics on my own and then like find a, a melody and then take that to a band mate or a band member or um, another writer. Like I really enjoy co-writing, so um, uh, yeah, and just uh, but now now I do play guitar and that does like help. Um, uh, a lot. I don't know if it was you or someone else said at a gig. Um, what I really like about your songs is that you you just you think that you're gonna go somewhere and you just totally do. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, that probably be because of the way that I've written the song. And I don't. I like to finish. Yeah, I just lost count of the number of bars. <laughs> yeah. That's all. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm capturing that it, you know with this album and just actually just doing what the song needs rather than it doing what a song is supposed to be.